On June 18, 2023, a tourist submersible carrying five people on a mission to the Titanic wreck lost contact with its main ship. For about three days, the submersible was nowhere to be found. What kept the whole world on the edge of their seats was that time was running out, as the US Coast Guard reported that all the people aboard the submersible had a limited window of about 48 hours to be found in the vast expanse of the ocean. The submersible, named Titan, is a small ship measuring around 22 meters long, which is quite cramped for five people. One of the individuals on board is Hamish Harding, a British billionaire pilot and explorer who has shared updates about the trip on social media. Also among the passengers are a French diver, his son Suleiman from a wealthy Pakistani family, and the CEO of the company that operates these expeditions, Stockton Rush. Securing a seat on the Titan doesn't come cheap. It typically costs a quarter of a million dollars. The Titan departed on Sunday morning from a larger sized ship about 350 kilometers away from Newfoundland's coast. The Titanic shipwreck draws so much attention and fundraising for these expeditions year after year. It provides a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the public to study the development of coral reefs, the corrosion of metals, and changes in ocean currents in the deep sea. This ship offers a distinctive approach to Titanic tourism. Its sub-design is innovative and operates using a game controller and touchscreens. The controls are pretty straightforward. Pressing forward makes the sub move forward, going back makes it retreat. Turning left or right changes its direction, and going up or down adjusts its depth. The controller uses Bluetooth, allowing anyone to operate it. The Titanic had already completed multiple trips this year to the wreck. However, we need to understand that the shipwreck is in a remote area, with the ocean floor where the wreckage lies reaching depths of around 13,000 feet. Descending to that depth alone takes about two hours. You'll need lots of courage and self-motivation to enter such a submersible, given the confined space and the fact that once you're inside, you get locked in. There's no way out or any escape hatches. Trouble started about an hour and 45 minutes into the submersible's descent when communication between the submersible and the mothership abruptly ceased. This is a critical problem because the surface command team is left clueless as to whether the crew requires assistance, whether they are lost, whether other vital equipment also has failed, or if the submersible is still intact. The greatest challenge to getting the submersible back to the ocean's surface was the depth of the waters. The immense pressure at 13,000 feet, which is approximately 4,000 pounds per square inch PSI, is comparable to weighing a car pushing down on every square inch of the ocean. Ocean Gate pre-installed pressure sensors on board to monitor the pressure of the submersible and provide the crew with sufficient time to react and resurface in case of any problems. However, this relies on every part of the submersible functioning correctly. Upon realizing that something had gone wrong, OceanGate contacted the US Coast Guard, which initiated a search on the surface. Simultaneously, they deployed a C-130 aircraft to conduct visual and radar searches of the area. One might question the logic of searching for an underwater vessel above the water. There are two reasons for this approach. First, all that is known is that communication ceased, and in such a situation, the submersible may have abandoned the mission and risen to the surface, hoping to be located. Secondly, the US Coast Guard doesn't have extensive capabilities for searching underwater. The only feasible option would have been to use the ship that launched the submersible in the first place. What made matters worse was the fact that they had to search within the water column, which reaches depths of 13,000 feet, and the US Coast Guard cannot descend to such depths. Instead, they used sonar boys and the ship's sonar to listen for any sounds in the water column. However, even if the sonar picks any sound, pinpointing the exact location of the submersible might require physically descending and bringing it back up to the surface. The undersea currents flow in various directions at different depths, making the search even more challenging. The depths of the ocean are a dark and mysterious place. Sunlight doesn't reach far below the surface because the water quickly absorbs it leaving the ocean in endless darkness. This is why the Titanic, resting in the midnight zone, is surrounded by darkness. Exploring the Titanic wreck is no easy task. 
Some of the previous expeditions that have made it to the shipwreck of the Titanic describe the journey as descending in the water through endless darkness for over 120 minutes until you suddenly see the ocean floor coming into view under the lights of the submersible. At this kind of depth, the lights of the submersible can only illuminate a small area of the ocean floor. Although the detailed image of the Titanic wreck that has been created over the years using high-resolution scanning guides the crew as objects come into view, they are also able to use sonar technology to detect objects beyond the limited reach of the submersible's lights. The Ocean Gate submersible has a fully fitted advanced inertial navigation system that works together with a Doppler velocity log to keep track of the position and depth of the submersible closeness to the seabed. In the depth of the water, the submersible pilots also use an inertial navigation system. This system uses gyroscopes and accelerometers to maintain their sense of direction and keep track of their depths in the water with their known starting points and speeds. Even with this state-of-the-art equipment, it does not reduce the difficulty of navigating through the depths of the water to the shipwreck. A few tourists who have been on expeditions to the wreck of the Titanic with ocean gates have also testified to how challenging it is to locate specific points on the seabed. One of the tourists on a previous expedition said that after they descended on the seabed, they had to search the dark bottom of the ocean blindly to find the Titanic. In the ocean, the water pressure increases as an object sinks deeper. At the Titanic's resting place, over 3,500 meters underwater, the pressure is about 400 times greater than at the surface, reaching approximately 42 MPA. To withstand such intense pressure, the Titan submersible has thick walls made of carbon fiber and titanium. It is designed to operate at depths of up to 13,000 feet. While most of us are familiar with powerful surface currents that can sweep boats off course, the deep ocean is also affected by underwater currents. Although the deep ocean currents are not as strong as the surface currents, they are still affected by the surface winds, deep water tides, and changes in salinity, pressure, and temperature. Strong surface eddies associated with benthic storms can occasionally produce intense currents that sweep debris from the seafloor. After the 72 to 96 hour estimate that the US Coast Guard reported elapsed, the Titan submersible imploded in the North Atlantic, and the pilot and four passengers on board likely lost their lives instantly due to the immense pressure of the water. According to maritime experts, they considered the implosion to be the worst scenario among the various scenarios they had considered during their relentless search for the missing submersible. Although the submersible was reported missing, it was highly likely that the implosion took place on the same day. They reached this decision based on an anomaly detected by the United States Naval Acoustic System. However, all of the international search parties continued because the authorities did not have conclusive evidence at that point. What exactly happens during an implosion? When the hull of a submarine collapses, it rapidly collapses inward at a staggering speed of approximately 1,500 miles per hour, which is equivalent to 2,300 meters per second. The complete collapse of the hull occurs within a remarkably short time frame of about one millisecond, or one thousandth of a second. To put this into perspective, a human brain naturally responds to stimuli in approximately 25 milliseconds, while the entire process of sensing and responding rationally as a human takes around 140 milliseconds. The hydrocarbon vapors inside a submarine are very flammable, which can be fatal in unfavorable conditions. In the case of an implosion, when the hull collapses under immense pressure, it sets off a chain reaction. First, there's a rapid implosion, and then the air inside ignites all by itself. This causes a massive explosion that leaves nothing but destruction in its wake. The force of the explosion is so powerful that it instantly incinerates human bodies, reducing them to nothing but ash and dust. It happens in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a scene of utter devastation. The submersible had a strong hull and built-in sensors to withstand the immense pressure near the seabed. However, even a small flaw in the hull could lead to a rapid and catastrophic implosion within just 30 to 50 milliseconds. What is so scary and heartbreaking is that in such a scenario, the passengers on board would likely have had no clue about what was happening. Throughout its service, 
The Titan had completed more than 20 dives into depths of the ocean, subjecting its hull to constant stress. This stress could potentially cause a separation of the carbon fiber hull, a condition known as delamination. Although both the Coast Guard and Ocean Gate expeditions have not released specific information about the implosion incident, it is reminiscent of a similar tragedy in 1963. The USS Thresher, a nuclear-powered submarine, suffered an implosion when it went beyond its safe depth during a routine test dive off Cape Cod. This unfortunate event claimed the lives of more than 120 sailors and civilians who were on board. And that brings us to the end of this video. Let us know if you enjoyed this video, and as always, keep exploring.